are we surrounded by angels and how do we begin to connect? Well, your ego is like an AM radio. It's a limited channel. We have to recognize that our spirit is not FM, it's satellite. We have to change the channel. And the yeah. way we change the channel is that we recognize our spirit is very different than our ego. Feel that the earth is supporting you and it is a conscious spirit. Feel the breath that's giving you life. Feel your heart beating. It's the spirit that makes the heart beat. And that's how you connect with your spirit and with your angels and guides. Woohoo! Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted a personal connection with your angels, then do we have the Ask Your Guide show for you. Today I'll be talking with world-renowned spirit guide, angel expert, and best-selling author Sonia Choquette about her latest angelic masterpiece, Ask Your Guides. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about connecting with your personal angels, guides, developing an angelic relationship, and how to call on them for help every step of the way. That plus we'll talk about French bishops and Palladian sisters, singing and Uriel, shopping spirits, painting spirits, and parking spirits, Dot Rose and Joseph, the importance of what does your spirit want, and what in the world a gust of wind has to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Sonia. Are you ready to shine? Of course. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm happy to be with you and all our listeners. It's a real treat and a real honor. So it's a treat and honor to have you here. And I feel like we are surrounded by angels today. In fact, that's where I was going to go with the first question today. However, if you don't mind sharing why are you in Chicago right now, and have you reestablished a special connection? Well, Michael, thank you for asking. I am actually on my way home from Colorado, where I grew up, and I just um, celebrated the transition of my mother's life at 90 years old mm -hmm. uh, with my entire family. It's the first time we've been together. I have a very large family. Uh, we all met in Denver on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and um, we had a celebration of life and buried her, and um, it was major. It was, it, you know, they say you're never too old to lose your mother, but I don't feel I've lost her. I feel like I've now transitioned into the most important relationship that I can have with her because she was my primary teacher in that we are spirit, spirit connected, yeah. spirit directed, and spirit eternal. So, okay, we're spirit now. Spirit to spirit, not a closure, but a definite upgrade on the channel. Woohoo! So I, I've got to ask, being a Colorado boy since 1988, what part of Colorado did you grow up in? I grew up in Denver, right in downtown Denver, right yep. off of Broadway and 6th Avenue, right in, at the time, what was the barrio. I mean, I was really in old school Denver, and I loved it, loved it. Very, very I cool. I went to a Catholic school, which is where I first met my angels and guides. I write about that quite a bit. St. Joseph on 6th and Gallipago, and... Um, it's all very trendy and cool right now, but it was just old school neighborhood when I grew up. So when you grew up, you had, all right, at least based on the book, the coolest mom ever who introduced you to your spirits and guides or, or helped. Tell us about this. Well, you know, my mom, uh, she had quite a, a, a colorful, challenging past. She was, she's Romanian. She was lost. She evacuated during the war when she was 12, lost her family, ended up in a, a concentration camp, then put in a work camp. By the time she was 11, 12, um, then the American soldiers came, liberated everyone. She lived pretty much with a bunch of liberated uh, um, prisoners of war, but she said everybody was on the same playing field. We were all. There was nothing. I mean, the war wiped out the food. The war wiped out 
the, the, the opportunity. So we just had to be resourceful. We had to use our, our intuition, our wits, and our connection to heaven to get us by. So she, she met my father at 15 and married him and came yeah. to America. Now, a couple of things happened during the war. One, she got a terrible rheumatic fever, so she lost her hearing. And so I grew up with a mother that was deaf. She didn't go to school beyond 12 years old officially, but she educated herself her whole life. And her primary message to us, I was one of seven children, was that no matter what happens, no matter what you hear, what you see, and what other people say, go within, listen to your heart, trust your divine connection. You're surrounded by angels and guides and God who loves you infinitely and will always take care of you. And that was a very empowering message because if you listen to your vibe, she respected you. I mean, it wasn't like she told us what to do. She said, your heart will tell you what to do and your guides will take care of you. They took care of her and they took care of us. So I grew up in a world where there was no differentiation between the physical and the spiritual. They, we lived in a house where we talked to the angels and guides, set a place at the table for them. And it was a very colorful, animated, spiritual celebration all the time. Very, very cool. I'm curious. Did you touch a button on your computer or did spirit? I haven't because touched a thing. It just came through that a button was being pressed over and over and over oh again. God, so I have it on I the recording for everybody to hear. And my computer's out in front of me. You would have had to see me reach out. I, I'm just sitting here. So that's an affirmation. Probably my mom. <laughs> Ooga booga and very, very cool. Exciting. Yay. When Wonderful. you. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. When you grew up, there was, you say there was no differentiation. Could you see spirits? Could you hear spirits? What were the conversations? If we were a fly on the wall in your house, what was going on? Well, the first thing is the orientation of how we conversed. We didn't say, what do you think? We didn't say, what did you hear? What did you read? What did they say? Our primary conversation oriented around what does your spirit say? So... If, if I would say to my mother, my spirit says I have bad vibes and we can't, I can't go there, she would say that we're not going. And it got to the point where we didn't have to converse. All we had to do was squeeze our hand, and that meant go, stop, listen. She would always say, you know, Papa's here, Nana's here. You know, these are spirits crossed over. The angels are here. We would see them. Mm -hmm. We had flashes of light crossing um, our cabinets. We had the doorbell ringing all the time. Uh -huh. Even at one point, um, we had neighbors watching the doorbell going in and out. And this was normal for us. I mean, we had constant interaction with the spirit world. And the thing I grew up with, Michael, is I never felt ever alone or unsafe. And that is a real remarkable thing, that to feel like I am protected. Michael, we talked about Michael, the archangel, constantly. Um, we would send our, what we called our runners, which I write about in the book, to go ahead and find us the, the restaurant, find us the keys, find us the lost shoes, find us whatever we need. It was very practical to have this whole symphony of help that we knew loved us unconditionally. And I have to tell you a funny, a funny conversation. Yeah. I remember one time when I, I was a teenager, you know, you get rebellious, you want to be your own person. And I, um, I asked my mom if I could go babysit when I was flat out lying. And I just wanted to go party with my friends. And she said to me, well, if I answered, I would say, okay, but what does your spirit say? And what do your angels say? Is this in your best interest? Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, rats. I, she put it right back on me. And I didn't go. And that was how we were empowered. We, we, were not, we didn't have to rebel against authority because she in, 
she said the inner the authority in our lives was our inner voice and our guides and our angels and that she was not going to um she trusted that implicitly in her implicitly in her life and put that in our lives so that's how our world went very cool. And I, I want to get into our own personal angels and how we can connect with our angels and, and some of these things like sending runners up ahead. How can we work with this? But I'm just thinking to myself, how much different of an amygdala experience life is if from day number one, we don't feel that sense of disconnect or isolation. Actually, we didn't feel it on day number one. Uh, as you talk about with your, your uh, uh, eldest daughter, Sonia, being born, when she breathed in, you saw a spirit coming in. Absolutely. We are not separate at any point, but we're taught separation. In fact, if you were to watch the, the negative worth of stimulation news right now, all you're taught is fear, 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 separation, separation. You're doomed, you're doomed, you're doomed. And how much of a different existence it is if you're loved, you're loved, you're loved, you're surrounded, there's help, there's assistance, all is good, and you're kind of embraced instead. Right. Well, you know, Michael, I sat with, I have six brothers and sisters. There were seven of us. One's crossed over. Um, and when we were at her eulogy, we talked about what, what she left behind. And I, I, when it was my turn to speak, I said she left seven fearless people who expected the best in life and who manifested the best in life. And we didn't understand or ever deal with the word no mm -hmm. it's not possible we we only expected that it was a game of how and to ask for help and to follow the signs and we all grew up with this incredible sense that the universe loved us and was our ally and helper and that's actually what i've devoted my life to teaching others to unlearn the 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 illusion that we have to surrender our power to other people and that we are victims of circumstance and we have we have no power and that in you know i'll say the best thing my mom would tell us is she said my luckiest message is i was born deaf i you know i turn i turned deaf and i and i've lived a deaf life so i don't have to hear the noise I only hear spirit. And what she taught us and what I'm teaching people, she listened with her whole body. And she didn't listen to words. She listened to energy and vibration. And that's what I feel we are naturally um, designed to do. We're not to listen to conversation and craziness. We're to listen to energy and see, does this expand and lift me up? Or does this contract and make me shrink? And if it contracts, walk away. And if it lifts me up, lean in. And that's how you connect with your spirit and with your angels and guides. Woohoo! When I talk with my wife, Jessica, I frequently say, language is not my first language. <laughs> I love that. You may not have words, but if you stop and be still for a moment, you can feel into what's going on. You say something interesting in the book. You say that some people have an easier time connecting than others, depending on whether you're in the vibration of the heart or whether you're in the ego, the head. So if people are watching this and they're going, I can't hear, I can't hear, that's good for you, but not for me. How do we get them dropped back down into the heart, open-hearted to be able to hear? What I'd like to do is actually walk them through that experience right now Ooh, instead goody. of tell them how to do it later because you have to have the experience in the moment. So here's the steps. The first thing I want a listener to do as we're moving through this is I want you to take a look around your where you are in the moment. You know, you see the computer, you might see a window, you might see a floor, whatever, but I you want to notice three specific physical things in front of you and name them. There's the floor, there's the computer, there's the window, name them out loud. And what this does is it brings you out of your ego head and into your body and into the moment. Mm -hmm. You have to be present to do this. And then slowly, I invite you to take a breath in through the nose 
not stress, not push. And I want you to shift your attention as though you're turning from the outside to the inside and become aware of the energy that you are experiencing your body without getting caught into why. Just feel what it feels like to be in your own body. Okay, heavy, excited, anxious, tired, numb, whatever. And now what I want you to do is place your tongue on the roof of your mouth and I want you to exhale like it, as pulling your belly into your spine and let it go emptying yourself of everything as though you're blowing out candles like this. Until it's all squeezed out. Using your imagination, breathe up from your feet to your, to your tailbone and into your heart space and slowly. And as you do this, you'll know your ribs open, your heart open. Now open your jaw really wide. Until you hear a click in your ear, you'll feel something shift in your throat and your heart and let out a loud sigh. Oh. Ah. It's like going down a slide and now you're in your heart. Ooh. Notice where you landed at the end of that sigh. And smile. Listen to your head. It's quiet. And now let that breath expand like a white light filling you up above and below your heart space in front and back into both sides. And we're creating what we're going to call your room to breathe. Ah, you can do that again. Like a down the slide into your heart. Ah. <sighs> quiets your mind instantly. It quiets the mental chatter and you begin to feel and experience life from the place where you meet your spirit, your guides, and your angels. So that's how you do it. Uh, I don't want to come yeah. back. <laughs> that, it's instant meditation because your mind quiets down. And you begin to experience your feeling body. You begin to feel your home. I call that the breath to come home. Yeah. Because you land at the end of that sigh where you belong in your heart. And then you let the light expand. Using your imagination, you just feel like, okay, this is my quiet room to breathe. Everything disturbing and noisy in my mind is pushed out. And you're not listening for words. This is a big confusion when you're connecting with your guides and angels. They don't speak in language. They speak in energy and vibration. So you're listening for feeling that you then translate into language. So just feel the energy in your heart. Feel that the earth is supporting you and it is a conscious spirit. Feel the breath that's giving you life. Feel your heart beating. It's the spirit that makes the heart beat. Science has no explanation for why our hearts beat. Mm -hmm. For all they know. And that's the spirit in your body. Ah. Let it expand. And you're listening from a place of availability. The two words that open that up are I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what my spirit really wants. I wonder what my angels and guides want to help me with today because they want to help me with everything. I wonder what I'll allow. I wonder how much fun this will be. I wonder how much support I'll make myself available to. Those are the tools that bring you to where we're talking. Not complicated, just an awareness, just a shift. I call it a change of the channel. Yeah. Not difficult. I wonder if we can cheat and call in the ministry of angels of hearing spirit better to help us to hear spirit even better. Well, you know, the thing that was so wonderful is that my mom taught me and I experienced, so I wasn't taking her word for it, mm -hmm. that there are so many different divisions of angels and there's what's called the ministry of angels, which is they administer to whatever you need. 
she sewed. That was her, her meditation. And she would call the ministry of sewing angels. They'd help her find fabrics. They'd help her solve a problem because she was a master seamstress, self-taught. They'd help her create the perfect design. It was her art and her conversation. We have the ministry of travel angels. I use them all the time because even in the pandemic, I've continued to travel. So I've asked the Ministry of Travel Angels to make the process seamless, to protect me and keep me healthy and out of out of the, the confusion and disease of the, the mental world. We can have the Ministry of Shopping Angels, the Ministry of House Hunting Angels, the Ministry of 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 healthy eating angels. I mean, whatever you need, there is a whole force. But here's the deal with angels and guides. They help you, but you're in charge. They work for you. And they will not help your ego. They will only help your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit is the divine, unconditionally loving part of you. I'm not going to help your ego because that's separation. Your ego is always going to be at odds with everyone else's. It's an it's a endless battle. But if you get into your heart and ask, what do I want help with specifically? And ask for the support. And then say thank you in advance. Thank you for the help. It's like if you, if you order something from Uber Eats or... Amazon or yeah. you relax, you know, it's coming. You don't fret. You trust. The agree There's a system that we've set up. It's an agreement. Well, with spirit, it's the same thing. Only elevated infinitely. You trust that I'm asking. I, it's heard. And now I'll get out of the way and I'll just expect it. And that's the key is to let go and expect because that's availability and allowing. You get out of the way. Your ego's not participating. So my mom would say, surprise me with something good. And I expect to be surprised. And that sets the, the state of mind you need to be in to let your life have a divine component and call in these beautiful assistants who love to help you. It's fun. I wonder, I want to dive into our personal angels, all these connections, all these questions we can ask. Is it important, you discuss early in this brilliant book about the importance of knowing who or what your spirit is and naming your spirit. Yes. How important is that when we're developing this connection? Because we're asking questions. The only questions, as you say, that will be answered are those coming from spirit. Right. So here's the thing, Michael. Your ego is like an AM radio. It's a limited channel and it's blah, blah, blah just like most talk radio, okay? So it's bandwidth is limited. It can't pick up beyond the ego. So we have to recognize that our spirit is not FM. It's satellite. <laughs> it's universal. So we have to change the channel. And the yeah. way we change the channel is that we recognize our spirit is very different than our ego. Our ego, I teach, and it makes it real simple. Your ego is like your pet. It's like your pet dog. It's your companion, it's your helper, but it's not the leader. I, I have means, a pet rooster who, her, when, when he gets going, he is, he is singing, and you cannot let him take charge. Exactly. So we don't, our ego is our companion. It's our helper, but needs to be trained. And goodness knows, you don't let the pet run all over and poop all over your house, right? You just can't. And that's what the ego will do if you let it run amok. Now let's get into your spirit. Your spirit is the part of you that loves. So here's how you connect to your spirit. And we'll do it with you. Right now, just so Perfect. people get an example instead of words. Thank you. The way to connect with your spirit is to fill in the blank quickly to everything I ask, okay? Sounds good. Butterflies. Here we go. It's, it's simple. I love... You. I love... Nature. I love... Everything. I love... Everyone. I love... Period. 
I love my wife. I love my kitties, my rooster. I love spirit. I love this conversation. I love everything about this existence. How do you feel? Woohoo! That's how you get into your spirit. You and here's the thing, you can't do this in your head. You have to answer out loud because the voice is connected to the chimney of the heart. So as I kept asking you what was happening? Up up, up the chimney I went. Right. How did your energy change? I went from happy with the volume turned down to, I mean, I'm in a very controlled space here. I could be a squirrel on crack if I wanted to, but feeling like there's energy coming out, like the corona of a, uh, of a solar eclipse and light coming out in all directions. We did this for 30 seconds maximum, but when you, there's nothing more powerful than the sound of your own voice coming from your heart, because that's the truth of you. And we hear it. People listening can go back and listen to you. The tenor, the volume, the frequency of the vibration of you got more and more empowered, expansive, true, authentic, connected. So we could sense, feel, and hear in our bodies, your spirit speaking. You sense, felt, and expressed your spirit speaking. We can't think it. That's why you have to say it. So if you sit and say this out loud for one minute, I love, I love, I love, and periodically take a breath in between, you have found your way back to your spirit. Woohoo! All right. Once we find our way back to our spirit, are we surrounded by angels and how do we begin to connect? Well, the very first angel and very first divine connection you're going to have is your guardian angel. We all have one assigned to us. It comes in with our breath. It comes in with the very first breath of our body. This is the companion that says, I am here to walk you through your life's journey and do my very best to keep you on the path you've chosen for this classroom. Keep you on your curriculum, if you will, of your own soul goals. Because our soul is a part of us that's here to learn, here to grow, and here to become consciously spirit embodied. Is soul and spirit the same thing? Mm -mm. They're not, but they're merging. The soul is the aspect of you that's here to learn that you are spirit. Spirit is like the sun, and the soul of you is the one of you, the aspect of your consciousness that has separated from the sun and is moving back to the light. That's why we can have a dark night of the soul, got a little lost, but we never have a dark night of the spirit. It's the perpetual light of who we are. Very so, so the soul of you is the student in you who came to have this experience. You signed up, you're ready to go, but you have a lot of teachers, tutors, helpers, assistants. The whole universe is, 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 is championing your success. Because your success is everyone's success. Because we're all connected. So you begin by making a leap of faith in the heart. And you just understand, I'm not alone. I just have to make that choice. The ego says I'm alone. Mm -hmm. The spirit recognizes I'm eternally connected. So... If your ego is going to, the part of you is like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's your ego, and it doesn't want to give up control. So I recommend a test, yeah. a suspension of disbelief for seven days. You have no risk. Just, just in other words, I don't want you to trust me. I want you to trust your own experience, but give it a chance, okay? Give it a chance. If you're going to be... Hypothetical about this, let's give the hypothesis an opportunity. 
So a suspension of disbelief for seven days yeah. and start asking for help. Just ask for help. Where's my, find me a parking. Start with simple things that you can get an immediate affirmation. Where's my keys? Where's, where's the parking space? Get me, get me the seat on the flight that's oversold. Um, help me find the, uh, the, the apartment I'm looking for, the home that help me find, let me connect to the person, get me to my appointment on time. Help me know what I need to say to get this job, sale, understanding, relationship, whatever. But ask, ask out loud. And then be gracious enough to say thank you. So yeah. that would be the beginning. You have a seven-day experiment. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each day, acknowledge where you were helped. Because the ego mind will have amnesia. It's so just, write it down. Make a list of, of your blessings for the day. Write it out. The most empowering way to connect with your guides beyond writing it down is to say it out loud. Because when you name it, you claim it. Once you speak it out, you own it. Thank you. Writing so, is still an intellectual ex, uh, an activity. It, it trains the ego to write it down. Mm -hmm. But to speak it out loud is to express the truth of your experience. So do both for seven days. I must ask, how about us singing it? Even better, because when you sing, you're, you sing, you are instantly out of your head. The singing comes from the breath. If you're, if you're ever going to train to be a singer, you have to first train your breath and open your heart and lungs. That's just where singing comes from. So, and I think it's wonderful to sing in the shower because everybody sounds good in the shower. The acoustics are perfect. So, and it's also a place where you can sing your heart open, sing out loud and sing. Thank you. Sing, sing, bring me my blessings. Sing, I need this and that today. And my, again, I refer to my mom because she really was a living example of this, but she said, don't ask out of one side of your mouth and then fear out of the other. Pick your team. Ask and let it go. Let it go. And this seems to the ego very risky, but I always say it's far riskier to leave things up to your ego because it never delivers. Yeah. So we're already at an advantage to try something new. So we can go to our archangel and I'm or go to our guardian angel, and I'm curious what we go to our guardian angel for. But with that said, I kind of want to leap ahead to the archangels for a brief moment, because from what I understand, you couldn't sing until you went to Uriel. Right. That's so funny. Well, we have... Archangels are like the quarterbacks of the team of, of, of guides and helpers. They are, they are the big portals that protect, surround, and, and assist us in life. And they are positioned in all six directions. So to the east, we have the Archangel Raphael, who is the Archangel of the mental plane, the Archangel of air, ideas, beliefs. Mm -hmm. And if you have a lack of, of faith, confidence, if you're negative, if, you, if you've been around negativity, if you've been entrenched in, in, in heaviness, then I would call in Raphael the wind to blow through your mind and clear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Behind us, we have naturally Michael, or some call him Mikael, He's the archangel of fire and protection. He watches your back. So he cuts through the baloney. He cuts the interference. He clears and blitzes. But, you know, Michael also has another, another um, service, which is he is also the catalyst, like fire, of creativity. Because when we're scared, we collapse, we contract, and we don't, we don't, create. Mm -hmm. We just react. So if you are someone who feels like you have inertia and you're not trusting your creativity, you're not taking risks, you're overly cautious, you're trapped in a life that's not fulfilling, Michael comes to clear the way with cool. his sword of light. 
Then we go to Gabriel, who's in the West, and Gabriel is the archangel of water. He clears our emotions. So if you're depressed, anxious, in grief, irritable, um, resentful, stuck in the past, numb, um, heavy, sad, then you want the, the waters of Gabriel to come and clear away the mud. So we call in Gabriel, who is also the archangel of dreams, inspiration, and healing. So we have a beautiful connection to heal our emotional body. In front of us is the archangel Uriel. He is the archangel of the earth. He is the archangel that is his frequency, by the way, is red. So I call him the red carpet angel. Cool. Archangel, he opens the red carpet for you to enter your life. Um, he's also the archangel of music and material experiences. He brings you whatever you need and um, helps you contribute whatever you have to offer. So it's a two-way gate. And he just basically clears the path. So we have what I call, these are called the horizontal archangels. Yep. So we have gatekeepers. And they are holding the space so that in our frequency... We are, of, we are undisturbed. We are not troubled by the world's confusion and chaos. And we live in the frequency with these archangels in place. And we have to ask them to be of service because they won't interfere. Then we be, begin to create what's called clear space of unconditional love. So it's other, in other words, I call it everybody out of the pool and I live in a clear house. I have a clear room to breathe. I have a clear channel. Then we have above us Metatron, who is the archangel of the sun, yeah. who brings in our guides and our healers and our healing teams and our um, ministry of angels and, and, and teacher guides. And I mean, we're talking as many support systems as you would ever need in any lifetime. Yeah. And then below us is Sandalfon, which is the archangel that connects us to the beautiful spirit we live on, which is Gaia, the earth. And connects us to our earth spirits, our our that give us the plants for our medicines and our herbs and our healing and our nature spirits and our animals and our flowers and our and our crystals and so can you see it's just like so much, so much love and beauty. So that's our vertical axis. Yes. And our job is to stay in this clear space and ask for help. We don't have to know all the mechanics of everything. They'll show up. We just need to know what we need to support our true and authentic self and our capacity to live in love fully and fearlessly. Thank you. It's interesting. I teach a process, automatic writing. I have a book on it right behind me, oh, the automatic writing experience, where you're talking with your angels. And each day they give me an SMP, a single-minded purpose, something to, to feel into for the day. And the last week, it has been the same thing every single day. More space. How can you bring yep. more space in everything? That's the key, Michael. I love this affirmation. That's what I'm telling. That's that room to breathe. Ah, and then expand above and below, front and back, side mm -hmm. to side, everyone out of the pool. Space. I love this. I have to read your book. Woohoo! I will get you a copy. On, Please. Absolutely. Afterwards. Address. Done. Pew. Guardian Angels, your baby Sonia, what happened and how? Well, let's, let's start there because I want everybody to really develop that personal relationship. Mine's Maximilian and we're growing closer and closer. Of course, he's always by my side, but I have to remember that. What happened when you first held your baby Sonia? Well, you know, when you're a new mother and you're having your first baby, of course, you're anxious and fearful. But I had this helper in the in the nur in the um, delivery room. It was pretty much an all natural delivery, but still I was in the hospital and I was in labor for days, like way too long. But when I, she was born, the nurse said, take her yourself. And I remember holding her to my body before I even looked if it was a boy or a girl. I just, then the beautiful attendant said, 
well, what is it, a boy or a girl? And I looked, and it was a girl, and she said, hello, little traveler. And her face was blue, and she was serene like a, like a Buddha. And then she took a breath, and I could feel her spirit drop into her body. It was awesome. I could feel and observe how this physical body pulled in the spirit that was who she was. And it was incredible. And I was so grateful for my nurse attendant. And later I said, I wanted to thank her. And I asked for her and nobody knew who she was. Nobody had any record of her. She was not on the she was not on the hospital registers that nobody even knew her name and it was it was her guardian angel it was an amazing physical manifestation because your your angels can manifest physically at times and that was an incredible experience on so many levels to see how our bodies house our spirits but they are not our spirits it, it begets many questions that would get us way off track. But I'll go with one of them. Then I'm going to come back to guardian angels here, which is, was she there flitting around in spirit, coming in and out of existence and not fully rooted, embodied for her earth school until that moment? Where was she? That's an interesting question that never occurs or matters to me. Because I just feel that she's she manifests as needed, mm -hmm. whether it's in spirit or physical, and I don't concern myself with that. So those are the questions that don't cross my mind. My experience of her is just at the point where I was in need of support and Sonia was going to be born. There she was. It wasn't like uh, she didn't distract. She mm -hmm. just stepped in with the other nurses. She just blended in and stepped out. And that's how the guardian angels present. They will just sort of step in as a natural flow of things and step out. And mostly we recognize after the fact yeah. that was an angel. We don't recognize it in the moment because it distracts us from, from the experience often because they come in to help us. Mm -hmm. So we're more concerned with what we need help with and then after the fact, it's like, whoa, that was pretty remarkable. Who who was that? And then you realize, ah, guardian angel. Yeah, where'd the guy with the tire jack come from? What? Right. That was another fun experience. My book is full of moments, my own and others, many others. But I was a teenager, and I was driving my little Volkswagen around. You run out of gas, you don't put the gas in, you don't, you, you live on the, you know, the $2 you can get coughing along and, and you, you, you get into trouble. Now this has happened, not just to many people. And I tell a story of one of my clients was on a road in Detroit in a bad neighborhood on the highway, ran out of gas in the night. Classic, classic. Yeah. You didn't think this through experience of youth and the little guy comes pulling up behind her parks the car comes out she's scared windows locked taps on the window holds up a gas can she opens her little car he puts in the gas he high fives her shuts the gas can gets in his car and drives away now how do you explain that except thank you angels yeah. and you know here's my experience michael and I present this to every single person who's listening. Tell me about your angel experience. I have never met anybody, and I have taught around the world for almost 50 years, who doesn't have one. They just never acknowledged it or spoke about it. These are common experiences that are being overlooked. We just need to remember, drop into our heart, create space, and remember. And also validate them verbally instead of hide them and dismiss them as that's a weird 
thing I'm not going to talk about. Validate, claim them, celebrate them, thank your angels and guides, and make it part of your experience. To me, to go to a, a, a um, neuroscience, like a Rick Hansen term, what we're doing is creating a myelinated superhighway. The more that we validate, the more that we connect the neurons in a sense. It's just an energetic thing. And the more that we do that, the easier it is for them to come in. And the more we recognize right. that we come in, the easier it is for them to come in, the more that we can ask for help and know that we are heard and received. When, let's go to guardian angels and archangels, and then we'll go to angels in general or ministry of angels. When do we go where? So you never need to call in your guardian angel. Your guardian angel's there. You need to thank your guardian angel, talk to your guardian angel like you have your best friend. But you don't have to call in your guardian angel because your guardian angel's on the job. Yeah. Okay? And just kind of walking with you like a guardian, like a, a, a guard who protects and kind of clears interference and tilts your awareness here and there gently, just making sure you're on your path. Yeah. Now, you call on the archangels when you have Really, you want soul growth and you want to really move forward in life. You're tired of being negative. You're tired of being fearful. You're tired of being bogged down with emotions. You're tired of struggling with material receiving and, and, and abundance. You want change. You want a shift. You, you, the, I, these are the big, big guns. You know, these are the big forces. I call them your archies. And they come in and say, okay, I'm ready for a shift of consciousness, of, 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 of vibration. Rewire these neurons for me. Give me a jolt. Okay, so those are the archangels. Then you call in the ministry of angels for assistance in the daily flow. What I need now, what I need now, what I need now. If you were royalty, which mm -hmm. I contend we all are in spirit, the royalty always has their helpers. Mm -hmm to clear the way and make the, can make the connections and bring in the joyful experience of life. So live like royalty and that you have all this assistance in place to manage and make the life, your life flow at the highest possible level of elegance, of grace, of beauty, abundance, because that brings out the best in you. You then become the most loving, joyful, fabulous, generous person on earth for you experience no lack. So your heart's open and you now become what I call an earth angel. So that's what you do. I know this question's coming up among people who are listening or who will listen. Time's not real. We won't even go there. Am I going to be bugging my angels too much? Not at all. You know, everybody has some experience of love, okay? You might love your children, you might love your rooster, you might love your plants, you might, you might, you have a love somewhere. And when you think of where you love, it's a joy to love. Mm -hmm. And I have a new granddaughter, Aww. and she's five months old, and such five month old babies are high maintenance. Very much. And yet everything I can do for her, mm -hmm. every moment I can be with her, every element of support I can offer is my joy. And I'm a mere mortal. Now your angels and guides have so much love for you that the, you asking them to help you lets them be at their best and have their best experience, which is to love you. So no, you can't ask too much. I love this. I've heard that angels feel right now uh, fairly unemployed. They're in the unemployment line. And for the and last I, few thousand years, they're going, what happened? Please put us back to work. Well, and here's what I see. I see that we call them like on the phone and hang up on them before, <laughs> before they even get to answer or in the middle because our brains interrupt and our fears and our yeah. logic and our, and our suspicions and our, and you know, that's all rooted, Michael, in a sense of, of unworthiness. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I, I look at my little granddaughter 
And she is just pure, a pure gift from God. And here's what's happened with that. I now look at all people with that refreshed sense of eyes. That's her gift to me. I see her spirit and then I see traveling and people in the airports and, and, and standing in line for their coffee and honking their horns. But I see in there, there's a pure spirit. I was reminded. And our angels and God never sees anything but that. That to me is so important because that shifts everything. When you get the understanding that even that big bad person, something, whatever, <laughs> baby spirit, is it pure spirit that just, my mom would say, it's like a light bulb. We're all like a light bulb and pollution settles on it. Mm -hmm. But the light never dims. We just have to clear the pollution. So let's, and that's where you call in the archangels. You call in Raphael. Raphael will clear that pollution. Gabriel will wash it away. Mikael will protect it from, prevent more from coming. And Uriel just helps bring in more light. All right. Completely random question since you brought up pollution and the angels if we're listening to this and and uh we're either being basted in the heat or who knows what's going to happen in this next winter and you're going my god what has happened with this place can yeah. we literally call in the angels to help with that yes because what's happening is that you know the forces of destruction precede the forces of creation we have to tear down the old to make the path for the new it's a messy process, but yeah. what is happening on our planet with both the pandemic and the earth changes is we are no longer numb. Mm -hmm. We are actually now having a direct experience of the collective choices and the passivity that we have all been able to live with for a long time because we've been un unfeeling and mm -hmm. disconnected. So, right, you know, it's like, yikes, and this is scary and Thank you, because you can't heal what you don't feel. Yeah. And finally, it's occurring to the collective mass consciousness that we have to do something different. Now, simultaneously and less emphasized is some incredible, brilliant breakthroughs happening. People developing and bringing technologies that turn plastics in the ocean into, you know, clearing them up and freeing them up and finding new fuels and getting rid of, coming up with ways to be rid of fossil fuel energy. So there is a simultaneous mm -hmm. creation force happening and we're just in the middle. So we ask our angels to be of service of the highest good. I have a prayer that I have said every day of my life since I was a child. And it is divine spirit in me. Move me in the direction of my highest good this day. Move my mind, my mouth, my words, my actions, my feet, my heart, my spirit, everything about me to serve in the highest good this day. And then you just get moved around all the time. It's quite funny how that happens, but you get moved into a place to be of service and contribute to the creative forces coming in. Before we started the show, we went quiet for a minute. We shared a breath, and I went to m quietly, Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Uriel. Higher self, higher team, all angels, guide, and light workers, here for our highest good and the highest good of all. Please help me to be of service. Please help me to, to help Sonia for my highest good, the highest good of all, or something better. So we're saying the same prayer. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. All right. On oh, that note. Oh, go ahead. I just think it's so it's such a beautiful affirmation of the divine connection mm -hmm. that we all share. So I'm praying this. You're praying this. We're praying the same prayer. We never shared this with each other verbally. We've mm -hmm. never had. But it's the same. It's 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 just confirmation that there is a thread of connection between all of us that is for the greater good of yourself, for ourselves, and for the of our place in the planet. Yeah. And it means there's a greater voice speaking through us. And if we realize that we're a receiver, once you get out of ego, when you're a receiver, and you live more from that space of spirit, everything changes. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> and and I want to make a visual for people because how I see this going is we're an electron sh that's being shaken up and we're going from one state about to go to the next. You can think of it like a rocket ship. If you look at a mm -hmm. rocket ship about to take off, it's very violent. Things are falling off the side of it. There's giant flames coming out the bottom. Don't take a snapshot and say, well, that's everything because you think you're doomed. Right. But if instead you realize you're about to take off for the heavens and you reframe from that perspective, completely different. Mm -hmm. However, if you do see that rocket ship and you're scared out of your mind, what are SOS angels <laughs> and how do we call them in? Well, our SOS angels are the ones that come in when we're really afraid and panicked and scared. And they come to reassure, comfort, and ease the crisis. If it's a real crisis, they'll usher in the miracle and end, end the crisis. If it's an emotional crisis, they'll intercept and, and stop the floodgates of emotion. If they are, are um, a crisis of will, then they will give you they will give you the courage to do the thing, the, the guided thing that you, you make the step, make the decision, make the choice, let go, whatever. So you call those SOS angels in when you feel like you're in trouble and you feel threatened and you need help. And the best way to call the SOS angels is just say help help and then get out of the way and let them so i think the biggest thing michael is that going back to what you said earlier space mm -hmm. we have to make the inner space to receive the mental space the emotional space i big i'm a big one on the physical space to clear from your life what is unnecessary because everything is energy to live as as simply as you can mm -hmm. without going into some de deprivation mode, which is just another form of ego and, and just open up and be well and simply be willing to be surprised. My, my teachers, including my mother used to say, never assume that what you know is all there is to know. And what you think is possible is all there is that's possible. So just be willing to be surprised with something new. I met a uh, Native American gentleman, Robert Mirabal, two-time Grammy Award-winning musician, amazing human being. I was down in the Taos Pueblo in New Mexico, and rainstorm came out. We ran from, my wife and I ran from one shop to another, and there's like platinum or gold records on the side, but it, it was actually a store of some, some quilting, of flutes, some other stuff. And this gentleman looks us up and down, this giant, amazing, kind of godlike Native American looks at us beautiful human being, beautiful soul. And he looks us up and down and he goes, are you runners? He goes, you're runners, aren't you? And he goes, come back here. And we go into the very, very back past actually like some sewing machines and a spinning wheel. And he holds up these barefoot running moccasins that I'd seen in a book that was about 150 years old, along with a Native American race from ancient grainy photos. And my wife and I had just written the book Barefoot Running about getting in touch with the earth. And I'd been wondering if these things still exist. And he holds them up and he goes, I called you here because I live in a magical world. We all live in this magical world, don't we, Sonia? I, I just love this story because it's the transmission that you're sending with it brings people into the magic it's beautiful and it's an it's an opening everybody can i'm sure feel it like i do that we can live in a magical world if we believe that's all we just have to that's the key to the front door to the magical world is to believe and then you'll see Woohoo! let's rephrase that <laughs> for people you won't see it or you won't believe it when you see it that's what the common right. paradigm is. You right. will see it when you believe right. it. Mm -hmm. Where can people go, Sonia, to find your beautiful book, to find your beautiful work? Well, I appreciate that question. My books are, of course, um, published by Hay House. Um, they're on Amazon. They're in bookstores. And I invite you to come to my website, which is just my name, SoniaShoquette.com. And I have... Um, Right there, 
an opportunity to work with one of my oracles to connect with a guide right away. So you can have an instant little interaction to get you going. And it, there's all the information there on my books and courses and things. So I would say, hey, come visit me at my website and poke around and see if you find support there. I think you will. And I would, and, um, I would be real honored to have you come visit. Woohoo! One more time on the website then. Yes. Sonia Choquette. My name is a mouthful. S-O-N-I-A C-H-O-Q-U-E-T-T-E dot com. Thank you. Two last questions. Then if there's time, a brief meditation. We had Stephen Greer on our show recently, one of the leading experts in the world on a UFO, on identified flying objects. And he's, he's met with leaders from around the world. And he talks about those who come to visit us are actually higher level beings. And you, um, one of your, I don't know, individual guides, two of your guides at some point early in your life were the Palladian sisters. So right. I wonder what you can share. The Palladian sisters came to me as just a force of truly unconditional love. They, 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 I just knew I was a child. I just knew they were there to keep my heart open because at the time, you know, I've got a few miles on a lot of people and that, you know, I've started very young in life and it wasn't quite the same hospitable environment it is today to be in a messenger mm -hmm. of intuition and angels and guides. So I really believe now in reflection that they came to give me that extra layer of 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 resilience and 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 humor and and not to take the the disbelieving eyes of the world personally and to just keep going with great joy and i i those higher beings are with me plus they were the precursors to prepare me for this is the age of the divine return of the divine feminine mm -hmm. It doesn't mean female. It means heart, love, the elements of the of the spirit, of the soul. So I feel like they also came as I was kind of a way clearer for this period entering now. And so they were light beings for sure. And I feel like you, you know, it's like you could say, how do you know they're light beings? And that's sort of like asking me, how do you know cilantro is cilantro? You know, how do you know garlic is garlic? How do you know you experience it and mm -hmm. you give it a name? But you know that the, the the frequency of what you're identifying matches the words. It feels true in your heart. You just know it. It's like, how do you know an A note is an A note and a C note is a C note? We're, we're languaging these experiences vibrationally. Yeah. And light beings have their own frequency. You just feel like you are being elevated, that your mind and, and your body are being shown something very different than your traditional experience, and it feels really good. Woohoo! Any last words of wisdom you want to share, Sonia, with people? You know, I'm going to just go back to, because it's so fresh in my own experience, the last words my mom said to me is... And she wasn't, she was between worlds. So she wasn't really speaking to me as more than she was just acknowledging what was happening mm -hmm. as she was transitioning out of her body and entering fully into the world of spirit again. She said, first she said, wow. I remember that, which I really loved. She was like, wow. And then she shook her head and said, I believe. And then she just was processing and she said, everything changes and something miraculous happens when you believe. And again, it wasn't specifically telling me something. She was just acknowledging what was happening. And then she was just like, wow. And I knew that her experience was out of this world for sure. But I said, okay, I need to pass that message along. Believe. It's a decision. 
Don't wait for the evidence to believe. Believe and then watch the evidence follow. I'm without words. I'm wow, I'll go with <laughs> tears. Ow. Summarizes it, I think. Tears, I'll go with. Tears to me express typically truth. Um, mm -hmm. When you hit a truism. Mm -hmm. Sonia, what a sacred. I, I thank you so much at this time in your life for sharing. This is a sacred interview. This wasn't just you know, jibber jabber about a book, which would be beautiful enough. This was really, truly sacred, Sonia. I appreciate that. I feel gifted and you know, we had our tapping, tapping on the <laughs> Such a, such a wonderful affirmation. And what I really want to say to people, it doesn't matter. You'll find the book. You'll find the information. You'll find the interview. You'll find the conversation. But mostly find that space in your heart. And you don't have to go looking. Everything will find you. I'd just like to say um, to everybody to just please close your eyes for a moment. And notice the peace that comes when just closing your eyes, the, 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 the way the senses calm. Breathe in through your nose gently. And imagine as though you're breathing clear into your belly, but you don't force, you surrender. And as you exhale, imagine that you really are asking your angels and guides to empty you of all that disturbs and confuses your soul. As you exhale as though you're blowing out candles and then gently, just very gently exhale like you're blowing out candles. <sighs> At the end of that exhale, breathe in again and feel how wonderful it feels to breathe in the light and the spirit that gives you life. Open your jaw and feel the click in your ear, your throat, and your heart. It just opens. Let out a deep sigh. Ah. And allow yourself to come down the slide of awareness into the center of your heart where you are perfectly peaceful, safe, and at home. Breathing into that space in your heart. Notice the light expanding with every, every breath and every beat of your heart. So you're being filled with a beautiful light that just is pouring into every cell in your body and expanding to the space above and below your heart, to the space in front of and to the back of your heart and to both sides and throughout your body and beyond the edges about three feet. And don't stress, don't strain, just surrender and let it let the light travel because that's what the light does. Don't have to force the light, just observe. And as you breathe, can you possibly imagine that there standing to your right is Archangel Raphael who protects your mind and keeps it clear and peaceful. And standing behind you is Archangel Micah and Michael protects and clears the path and cuts the cords of confusion and all attachment to the wrong things that disturb your peace. And as you breathe, can you possibly imagine that to your left is Gabrielle, Archangel of Water who washes away all the debris and allows you to live fully, peacefully in present time. Breathing in, before you rolls out a red carpet laid before you by the Archangel Uriel with a symphony of love and light, singing and dancing and celebrating you into the path before you as you bring your best gifts that the world needs, trusting that you will be rewarded 10,000 fold and beyond. Breathing. Know above you the lace golden curtain of light will open as Metatron makes way for all guides, light beings, teachers, healers, helpers and beyond to provide you each day everything you need to have a royal experience. 
and feeling the ground below you as you walk on holy ground. And the spirit inside you is the holy light, feeling the nature world supporting you, healing you and nurturing your physical body so that it stays healthy, strong, and balanced throughout your entire journey. Feeling the light of your spirit at the center of this beautiful space. Let it wash through with a perfect color for you today. And that is the color to balance and restore you to perfect equilibrium and connection. And releasing a deep sigh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Go forward in peace. All is well. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. <laughs> thank you michael thank you sonia this was beautiful and, and you mentioned our archangel in front of us and as you did my light directly in front of my shut off like there was a shadow <laughs> i love it it was too cool playful excellent thank so. you I cannot thank you enough. I got to crank it back up for the finish here. So for okay. everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get, ask your guides and begin creating space and developing a relationship with your personal angels and spirit guides today and shine bright. Woohoo! Wow, what a, wow, I guess, wow, I guess, wow. What a special, sacred, I want to say special sacred Sonia Chuckat interview on Ask Your Guides. Her mother visited. Archangel Uriel visited. I am dumbfounded by this interview. And I truly, I truly believe, you can see out of my loss for words. What you believe, you will see. If you get nothing out of this, what you believe, you will see. On another note, I'm sending her a copy. I'd love to send you a copy of Awe, the Automatic Writing Experience, a process you can learn. Been the number one Angels and Spirit Guides book, a process you can learn so that you can converse with spirit, converse with the angels, converse with your own personal angels, to literally drop in as she shares, go quiet, put pen to paper, and have your angels begin writing to you. I have the book. I have a video-based program with live classes. You can find it all at automaticwriting.com. You can get the video-based program. You can begin learning automatic writing tonight. And we have once a month a class to help get you up to speed quickly as well. That's at automaticwriting.com. If nothing else, get the book on Amazon or even better, your local bookseller. Bring the receipt back to automaticwriting.com and get lots of bonuses. And if you're in the giving mood, get one for a friend, someone in need, especially for your local library, so that everybody can begin communicating with their angels and spirit guides. On that note, to check out more interviews, to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, and live events every Sunday night with me, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the bell icon below, that'll get you notified. Here's where you go to find out the next amazing interview, Big thumbs up if you like this. Leave your comments. Love you guys so, so much. Shine bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? Thank you, angels. Thank you, spirit guides. Thank you. <laughs>